Ken, you want to go next? Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> done. Hi, my name is uh, Ken Chenis. I'm a chief architect at ACI Worldwide. Uh, ACI Worldwide is a uh, is the payments uh, company. You may not have heard of them, but there's a good chance each of you used them today when you checked into your hotel. Uh, we process uh, payments um, and banking for over 5,000 financial institutions, merchants, uh, intermediaries, and billers worldwide. We do about $14 trillion a day uh, in payments uh, through our software, uh, so it's a pretty extensive environment. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, real-time payments analytics and real-time fraud detection that we were able to achieve on the OpenShift platform. Um, so first, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, ACI's universal payments platform. Uh, because we support so many different types of um, financial modes of moving payments from point A to point B, we have a wide variety of uh, software applications. Uh, those applications cover uh, a plethora of uh, areas, including retail payments, merchant payments, bill payments, and so forth. So like when you pay your charge card, you're probably going through ACI's bill pay service, or when you charge something, you could be using a retail payment authorization service that, that we run, or when you use an ATM machine, you're probably going through ACI rails to get money out of the machine. So we do all of that. Uh, and what's really key to us is fraud detection and payments intelligence. So everything that runs in our cloud environment goes through a centralized um, universal payments platform uh, which is hosted in the ACI cloud. It's a private cloud uh, that's geo-distributed in multiple data centers across the world. Uh, and so we have these challenges uh, that we have to deal with, and one of the biggest ones is payment latency. Uh, when you process a payment with very little amount of time to make decisions on what to do with that payment. Uh, and during that decision-making time, that's when we have to make the determination as to whether or not it's a fraudulent transaction or a good transaction, and what other payment intelligence we want to tag on to that uh, payment. So a little bit about how we do this. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of data science that goes on behind the scenes, uh, but ultimately we have to make real-time decisions because from the time the payment comes in to the time the payment goes out, we only have about 80 milliseconds to figure out what we want to do with it. Uh, and so for those of you that are working in uh, microservice land or working with services in general, um, hopefully you'll recognize 80 milliseconds is not a tremendous amount of time uh, to do everything that you'd have to do with this. So we start off with, uh, with machine learning um, and uh, data science, working on uh, data in a big data repository on a Hadoop cluster. Uh, and what ultimately comes out of that is features, rules, and models. Uh, those features, rules, and models are what we apply real time to each transaction that's flowing through the system. So in parallel of sending the data to the uh, historic repository so that we can continue to do continuous machine learning on it, we send it to a real-time decision engine where we apply the features and the rules and models uh, in real time and we make a decision on what to do uh, with the payment. We had some challenges with early versions of this product as our payments uh, started to increase in volume and fraud detection started to incre increase with complexity. Uh, and so as we set out to design a next generation platform for payments analytics and fraud detection, we actually looked to containerization as a vehicle to achieve some of our non-functional requirements around performance, scalability, and latency. Uh, and so we moved to a uh, microservice architecture and we broke the solution up into small microservices that we were able to then dockerize and deploy on OpenShift. Uh, and this gives us a, a, a tremendous amount of power uh, because we can scale the environment up and down uh, as the needs be, uh, and we have a very low latency uh, between the microservices within the, within the platform. Um, we moved from a relational database model uh, to a Cassandra cluster model, so we're using a, a Cassandra cluster uh, for our persistence uh, layer, and of course we, we still are using our Hadoop cluster for all of our uh, machine learning. We uh, used a lot of open source technologies and then expanded them to meet the ACI's uh, non-functional requirements. Um, we are very stringent about uh, security and we're very stringent uh, about ensuring that um, a, a payment gets from point A to point B uh, without getting lost. And, and we have about a 40 year history where we've never lost a, a financial transaction and, and that means a lot to, uh, to ACI. 
So here uh, you can see our, our transactions come in uh, through our universal payments platform. It's kind of like a, uh, a universal adapter. Uh, then they go into our uh, event receiver. Everything's defined through metadata. Uh, so as the data evolves, we can just do uh, configuration changes into the environment and it automatically updates. Uh, we never have to experience any downtime in the environment because we can roll service updates uh, throughout the environment simply by deploying new containers. Um, a little bit about uh, the real-time analytics and our performance characteristics. Uh, we, we come into an exec. The exec runs into a microservice, which is running a complex event processor. Uh, we can spin up any number of these. You know, During Black Friday weekend, we'd probably have um, six or seven of these running uh, in parallel. Uh, we execute our models the same way. We'll have multiple model executors running in parallel. Uh, we will go to the Cassandra data store to retrieve all of the feature information. Uh, and then we make a decision. And uh, we rode through the Black Friday weekend, uh, which is basically Black Friday and Cyber Monday, uh, and maintained a 30 millisecond latency time for all of our decision making. Uh, so we were, we were pretty proud to hit that metric on the, on the OpenShift platform. Um, what we'd like to do in a future direction uh, is really where we originally intended to be. Uh, which was running our Cassandra cluster also on OpenShift uh, and running our Hadoop infrastructure on OpenShift. Uh, we've uh, encountered some challenges and we're working with uh, the vendors. We're working with Hortonworks uh, and, um, and Datastax uh, and um, Red Hat to try to tie these platforms together uh, so that we can uh, maintain the, the low latencies and the same scalability and flexibility that we have within the container platform uh, to what we have outside the container platform. Uh, so that's, uh, that's where we're hoping to, uh, to get to uh, with the environment. Um, so I'll pass it on.